because the outside world rejects you. Hey, what's up everyone? This one's a little tricky to talk about. It's still very much fresh on people's minds. While I feel most Turtle fans didn't gravitate towards the Michael Bay Turtles as they're now known as, there is a section of the fan base that does appreciate these movies, so I just want to start off by saying that's totally okay. People like different things. But to me, in my heart of hearts, I'm not a big fan of these turtles. And I want to discuss what I saw happen, all the complications of when it was rolling out, and a little bit of what I saw as the feedback from a lot of the fans when these Bay movies came out. Why was there not a full embrace of the Ninja Turtles from the public that there once was? Where had Turtle Mania gone? Anybody can be a Ninja Turtle. You just gotta buy the right stuff. It's hot in there. You start the day with your turtle towel, your turtle toothbrush, consult your watch for turtle time, get your slippers and your turtle underdacks or your turtle apron, grab your turtle cookies and if the cartoons haven't started there's time to read your turtle comics, sniffing all the while turtle air freshener. Turtles. Real quick, if you're new to the channel and want more Ninja Turtles related content in your life, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and catch all the TMNT videos that are coming out here on the channel. But without any further ado, let's take a look at the 2014 Michael Bay Turtles and what went wrong. Pizza dudes got 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. First, let's start off by saying the 2014 film was directed by Jonathan Liebsman and not Michael Bay. But due to the way the movie looks, its aesthetics, the appearance of Megan Fox, the way the dialogue is in the movie. I saw them and I've known them since I was a little girl. They were my pets. They were my childhood pets. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? The over the top grandeur of all the action scenes and Bay being attached to it as producer, it just feels like a Michael Bay movie. And it's just easier to refer to it as that. Everyone knows exactly what film you're talking about when you say it. Now, like I said earlier, some people like the movie. The elevator scene, while I don't really see the charm in it, it's just not my type of humor. The turtles just look bad aesthetically in my opinion and seeing them all bunched up together just doesn't help for me. But I can't lie and say, People don't like this scene. It's something I see people talk about with some level of praise. And also when the first trailer came out, it doesn't have a bad thumbs up to thumbs down ratio if you go back and look at it. That's pretty good. Although I think if it came out today, it might be a different story. People as a whole I feel have gotten a bit more outspoken online since then. Now in the early days of production, script leaks came out. And this was where I feel a bulk of the negative feelings towards this iteration of the Turtles started. While it's impossible to know exactly what happened, this is what it looked like from the ground level. It had been 17 years since the last time there had been a live action Ninja Turtles movie. Then we got word, earliest articles I could find going as far back as 2010, that Michael Bay and Platinum Dunes were coming over to do a Ninja Turtles live action movie. Fans were, just judging by the comment section on all these old articles, skeptical. Although the Transformer films, which Bay and Co did, financially were about to hit their peak, making all sorts of cashola, and seeing it like this, yeah, makes sense. Do the Turtles movies like that, and they'll make all the monies as well. But what had went unnoticed was that word of mouth online had started steering fans away from these movies little by little. The consensus amongst the public was starting to grow that the Transformers movies weren't really that good. They look good to a certain degree with like the effects and stuff, but more and more people were starting to notice that there wasn't really that much substance in them. But it was too late. The gears were already turning on the turtles. An early version of the script was eventually leaked, codenamed The Blue Door. It was dated January of 2012, which is two years after some of these articles that had come out announcing Bay coming over. Fans didn't take too kindly to this script. Instead of the Shredder, well being the Shredder, he was a character named Colonel Schrader 
and he had like a black ops group named The Foot. The biggest thing that probably upset fans about this was the change to the turtles origin, having them be aliens originating from a species of turtle warriors or something. Word on the street at one point even suggesting the removal of Teenage Mutant from the title. This caused a massive amount of backlash and the movie wasn't even close to coming out yet. It was pretty bad. Michael Bay even stating at one point, the leak script for Ninja Turtles that different sites continued to comment on was written well before I or Platinum Dunes was involved with the project. The script saw the shredder a long time ago. This is tired old news. Wait for the movie. It made sense. Wait for the movie. But it was no doubt the damage had been done and it continued. Clips would eventually surface from a Nickelodeon upfront event that just made the script seem more likely, making it seem like the alien turtles we had heard about in the script were most likely gonna be the turtles we were gonna receive. When you see this movie, kids are going to believe one day that these turtles actually do exist when we are done with this movie. These turtles are from an alien race and they are going to be tough, edgy, funny, Things were not looking good. Even old Turtle alumni were jumping on. The actor that played Mikey in the original movie going as far as penning a letter to Bay, and even Peter Laird speaking out about it saying, I was impressed with what I saw of the production values. If nothing else, it looks like the new TMNT movie will have a lot of stuff going on and looking good. That toppling tower, for example. But the changes to the basic design of the turtle seems to me to fall into the fixing what is not broken category. It's altogether possible that in the contents of this new movie, these designs will work and not seem so odd. But I still point to what Jim Henson's Creature Shop team did with their rendering of the turtles in rubber and paint as the best translation in live action anyway. Of the turtles, as Kevin Eastman and I created, them. This resonated with a lot of fans. To us fans on the street level, it appeared we were off to a rocky start with this new film. The film at one point even appearing to be put on ice for a while. It had gotten delayed. Originally set for a 2013 release, it had been pushed back to 2014 and then pushed back again a few months thereafter. Eventually the ball got rolling again, but the plague of problems continued. It seemed like, at least from the outside, in an interview in 2013, William Fitchner, one of the actors in the movie, was asked in an interview, what are you doing in Ninja Turtles? He responded by, I play the shredder. It is cool. It's one of those things that came along where I thought, really? Let me think about this for a minute. Then I was like, yeah, okay. It sounds like a journey. I'm very glad that it worked out and I'm really glad that I'm doing it. This was very interesting. He was even referred to as the shredder for a while in interviews following. Fans were a bit upset. It seemed like the Colonel Schrader thing from the leaked script was also happening, at least from the fans' point of view. Plus, Shredder was no longer the Japanese warrior we'd all come to know. Something happened eventually because in future interviews, they didn't refer to him as Shredder anymore. I believe he even acknowledged it at one point, stating, I play a character named Eric Sachs, which is the character he does in the plane in the finished product. I imagine some adjustments had been made, and I'm not sure if it's my imagination, but it feels like the changes were made kind of late. You can tell when you're watching the film. When Shredder isn't wearing his mask, his face is always hidden in the shadows. He's never clearly shown. While this could be them just portraying him as a mysterious figure, to me it always looked like pickup shots that they got after the fact when they saw the backlash to the Fitchner playing the Shredder thing. And it looks like in hindsight, they weaved in an Oroku Saki character into the film last minute. Now that's just me guessing and the feeling I get when watching the movie. Plus a different actor altogether comes in for part two's version of the Shredder. Now this didn't seem like the only adjustment made. After it was announced that the turtles would be aliens, they went back on that a little bit, saying that the ooze itself would be from outer space instead of the turtles. It was getting close to the film's release and changes appeared to still be happening, which I guess is not too uncommon. I would imagine films make changes in post all the time, but it seemed that the volume of these changes was significant to the point where it started feeling like we were getting a movie without a solid foundation. One of the last changes that kind of caught people off guard was the addition of Jackass's Johnny Knoxville to voice Leonardo. This threw people off as, 
All the other turtles were voiced by the actors that played them in their motion capture. It was a last minute change that, although didn't have too bad of a reaction, it still left some people scratching their head. Plus, I don't think he ever came back for the second one. Uncertainty was a feeling I feel best describes my feelings going in. That and my curiosity. They definitely had my curiosity too. Now, this is just some of the stuff leading up to the movie that I feel hurt this version of the turtles. But how was the actual movie? Cowabunga, brah! Now, the film performed financially pretty good, for the time at least having a budget of 125 million and making a total of 493 million, which is obviously more. Seems a bit low for today's standards where big properties are making closer to a billion, which by the way, I feel like the turtles could get close to if done properly today. But regardless of that, at the time, it seemed like a pretty good result, at least to warrant a sequel. But still, the movie, at least to me, has a lot of problems. The Shredder's design was too over the top in my opinion, looking like a mix between a Transformer and that thing Wolverine fought that one time. The turtles lifting and throwing shipping containers was interesting on first watch, but when I watch it more and more, I really dislike that element more and more. They appear to have Hulk-like strength, and it just seemed like a lazy way to make them seem more badass. Plus, it along with them just being bulletproof just makes them seem too invulnerable. It doesn't ever feel like they're in any real danger. I remember the 1990 movie made you feel like Raphael was actually gonna die. Even in this 2014 one, when the turtles are captured, I never really felt like anything was actually gonna happen because of how over the top their strength and durability was. These turtles fly around all over the place as if gravity doesn't affect them. Sometimes the CG, to me, feels a bit overwhelming. It's as if I'm watching a cutscene from a video game instead of watching an actual movie. You can't feel the weight of the action scenes. I get them being ninjas and being able to hop around and stuff, but this looks too animated to me. Even the surroundings don't look real sometimes. I don't know if it's the oversaturation of the color grading or if the set dressing is actually computer generated. Everything just seems to have a weird glow to it. That to me is a bit distracting when I watch the movie. There are some nice shots of the city though sometimes. Another thing I feel went wrong with this movie was the dialogue. Some of the jokes are so cringy. You ever heard the expression, never take candy from a baby? It's because even babies love candy. They look at you and they see, wow, there's a nice, there's Candy. They're like dad jokes. Jokes like this and cheap fart jokes I imagine did not help this movie in any way but maybe get some cheap laughs. To me this hurts the rewatchability of this movie a lot. Plus this was around the time that Marvel was coming out the gate hot with sharp witty jokes that now yeah we're all used to but at the time was fresh. Also the DCU was starting their thing, at least I think that's what it was called, and Star Wars was attempting to start launching their comeback. This is all before the Last Jedi situation. All this competition plus a rocky start, cringy dialogues and jokes, and one of the biggest setbacks that I haven't talked about yet, the actual designs of the turtles. Let's talk about it. The turtles look very cool. Very cool. Technology had advanced beyond our wildest dreams when it comes to computer generated graphics. What a time to be alive. Bay, no doubt, has made leaps and bounds in this department. The turtles are tricky though. Their look is so iconic that in my opinion, you have to be careful with what you're changing when you do change something. The Nickelodeon 2012 animated turtles probably had the best approach to this. The look of the turtles had drastically changed, but you could tell that the person in charge respected their past. Subtle details such as the turtles being simply decked out with their leather straps, some bandages, but no sweaters, boots, accessories cluttering up the design. Leo having the two thin diagonal straps, Donnie having the one diagonal strap while the other two brothers have just a regular horizontal strap. Very simple touches that let people know, subtly, that these people had a love for turtles. This, plus everything else they did great with this show, made it a fan favorite. Now these designs, on the other hand, are unrecognizable. While yes, they are works of art. The texture and the detail is beautiful. I don't even know where you would begin constructing the models on something like this. But what might seem like minor details to some is a big deal to Turtles fans. The snout and the mouth area is a huge part of the Turtles. And this was replaced with just plain humanoid style features. 
it's very unsettling and lost all the charm that one thinks of when they think of Ninja Turtles. If they would have just got that one element right, even with the rest of the design, which I'll talk about right now, that possibly could have made a huge difference. But as for the rest of the design, it's cluttered with accessories, and while yes, it gives the turtles character, it also takes away from the design. Turtle fans want to see the turtles, their shells, the front, the side, the back, unobstructed. Something about doing this with the turtles is just fascinating. In this case, you're looking at a bunch of clothing and electronics that don't seem very practical. It seems like they would just get in the way anyway. It takes away from the look of the actual turtle. Also, the turtles are way too big in this version. It's cooler when they're underdogs. These turtles, whatever situation they're in, do not look like underdogs. They crush cement when they land on it. They're massive. The turtles should always be somewhere between, I don't know, five foot-ish to maybe 5'7 max. That is what makes it cool because when characters like Slash and Leatherhead pop in and the turtles have to deal with them, it's awesome. Like how are they gonna take down this mountain of muscle? When they look like the Incredible Hulk, it doesn't have that same effect. And I gotta close by saying, I know some people like this design, but to me, it's no doubt that the overall look of all four turtles hurt the success of this movie for sure. Now, the turtles' individual looks is a lot to unpack, and I also wanna talk about this movie's sequel, Out of the Shadows. So I'm gonna split this one up into two parts and wrap this one up for now. But stay tuned, in part two, we'll go over the individual turtle looks and how they changed from this first movie to the Out of the Shadows movie and what I thought about said sequel as well. So stay tuned. Also, if you're stumbling across this video and you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. But that's it. Thanks everyone for watching. What did you think of the 2014 Ninja Turtles live action movie? That first one, not the Out of the Shadows one, the very first movie. What did you like? What did you dislike? What would you have mentioned in this video that I might have missed? Let me know down below and we can all check it out and talk about it. But that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a little bit with another video. Take care. Hey Turtle fans, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to follow me on all the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's a good way to stay in touch with the channel. And also if you want, go ahead and give the video a share on your social media platforms, Reddit, Twitter, all that stuff. And let's spread turtle mania to the world. Once again, thanks everyone for watching. It really does mean a lot.